I find this whole business about needleless connectors very interesting. Of course, I've been practicing for a, a long time and began with, with needles and very simple um, hubs and things that interact. And I understand the dynamics of the time when we transition to needle co needleless connectors and the concern about um, having occupational associated um, injury and um, uh, HIV transmission, things like that. We have gone into a series of unintended consequences where what was right for the healthcare worker now may be harmful for the patient. And our responses with needleless connectors has jeopardized patient care because of increasing the risk of infection. So as I see it, the compliance issues or lack of compliance with the uh, 15 second scrub the hub is endangering our patients. So we have to be smarter about how are we going to manage this. Either we're going to put up our hands and say we are not going to be able to, despite all of our educational efforts, get the compliance that we're going to need to be ensured that our patient care is as best as it can be. Therefore, we probably need to look to um, passive technologies to help us out so we don't have to think about it. We don't have to depend so much on compliance. It's an automatic. It's taken care of. With regard to needleless connectors, the question is, what can we do to help improve or reduce colonization and subsequent infection that are associated with them? So I'm looking at a passive technology and therefore looking at a hospital's baseline uh, rate of infection for central lines and then looking at the point where they're adding in this technology and then following them for six months afterward to see if they've had a relatively otherwise stable level of um, uh, uh, standard of care, what impact that intervention has had. We'll be um, looking at the multi-site data and trying to do an analysis to look to see if there is a trend, if through a group or what individual hospitals are doing, to see if there has been in fact a reduction in um, catheter-associated bloodstream infections.